I didn't realize and uh, when we first started on this pathway of walking into the Father's love, I had no idea where it was going to lead us. I didn't really think it was leading us anywhere that other people weren't going to start with. But as the time's gone on, just this pathway has led us into more and more and more. And in the last few weeks, maybe three, four weeks, um, I don't know. I don't know how to say. Um, I'm going to be saying some things today that I have never said before, that I've never seen written in any books by anybody else before, like any books at all, um, except for the Bible. I see where Paul alludes to a lot of the things or talks about some of the things I'm going to say. But um, many years ago, Denise and I kind of coined this phrase, that um, we've felt like we've been in a river of revelation. And uh, in the last probably couple of months, it seems like this river has been flowing again for us in a very strong way. And, uh, and in the last few weeks even um, more so, I, I was sitting down before talking to Denise about um, what I might say. And so I went into a little room by myself for a while. And after maybe 15 to 20 minutes I just felt like my mind was blowing so so wide um, I didn't know how to I just couldn't stay in the room I, I felt like I was just overwhelmed with um, things that the Lord has been showing me of late and uh, they're so to me so impacting I don't even know how to communicate <clears throat> some of these things so I'm just going to kind of throw some things out that I've been seeing and things I've been thinking about and Denise and I've been talking about a little bit and uh, all I can say is um, if there's any if there's any problems that you have with what I'm saying just just uh, maybe wait 10 years <laughs> I, I don't know what else to, really, to say but I want to I want to start by reading something to you that I only saw this last week, this verse. I've seen the verse many times. I've read it many times, but sometimes it just jumps off the page to you. And it's from Proverbs chapter 2, and there's several verses here I want to read. But I want to come back to one particular phrase that's mentioned here. Well, let me start with that phrase. The, the phrase is in verse 5 of Proverbs chapter 2. And uh, just reading the whole of verse 5, it says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Find the knowledge of God. That's the phrase. And, uh, and I'd always read that in the past to mean that um, if we do these things that it's talking about in these verses, then we'll find a relationship with God. We'll find a knowledge of Him in a personal way and get to know Him in a relational way. And so... When it talked about the knowledge of God, I felt like that's what I was saying. However, when you look at the whole context of this, it's not actually saying that. And, uh, and so I want to read from the beginning of the chapter. It's um, Solomon speaking to his son. And here he's, let me read this to you. He says, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. He goes on, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield for those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Now, the whole context of this portion is Solomon saying to his son, if you will seek for understanding, if you will seek for discernment, if you will apply your heart to understand, if you'll incline your ear to wisdom, then 
something will happen to you. If you really will look for wisdom, look for understanding, if you will seek it with all of your heart, he says, you will, and these are the words, you will find the knowledge of God. What that is saying is not you will find a relationship with him, but you'll find the way God thinks. You'll find his knowledge. And that's, that has been a, a basic thing that's been occurring to me in the last few weeks, um, amongst some other things as well that seem quite disconnected. But what I've seen is that what Christianity is about is not just having a relationship with God whereby we listen to his voice, we hear his teaching to us, we hear his wisdom, and we, and we walk a life following his commands to us. What he's actually saying, and this is, the, this is the destiny for the human race, is that if we will seek for understanding and wisdom, we'll seek for this, he will actually show us and teach us how to think like he thinks and to know what he knows. Now, when I consider that, that, that is an extraordinary path when we think about what God knows. You know, the, the, the word we use for God's knowledge is, is the word omniscient. And what that word means is it means knowing everything. Now, I spoke about this last week, I think. But this knowledge that God has... He knows everything about everything. I mean, no scientist is ever going to discover, and no say ever going to discover anything that God doesn't already know. No one is going to understand um, everything God knows at any stage. But as we go on, we're going to come into more and more and more of the understanding and the knowledge that God has. So one of the things that I was... We were, talking about this last week and one of the 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 a part of the pathway if you like of pursuit of wisdom or the pursuit of the knowledge that god has a part of the pathway is um that his knowledge is not just wrapped up in the information and the stuff he has is wrapped up in his whole personality now you and I, we can have knowledge, and it might not affect our feelings, our emotions, uh, our personality, our personal nature, the way we are. But in God, it's different. His knowledge is absolutely connected in every way to his nature. What I, what I mean by that is you cannot come into knowledge of God if your nature is different to his. Understand? Like, it's, it's obvious when you think about it a little more deeply, you cannot come into the things that peace can teach you unless you have peace in your own heart, because unless you know what peace yeah. is. And uh, so no. peace in us, peace in us is going to help us to come into the understanding of how God sees science, the world, the universe, space, um, mathematics, chemistry, human health, um, personality disorders, everything that can be involved, we can only come into it as we also make progression into his, his nature. Now, I just want to read a couple of scriptures that, that um, enforce this. Um, when reading in um, James chapter 3, verse 13, He's talking about wisdom here. This whole portion is talking about wisdom, the wisdom that comes from God. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. In the meekness of wisdom. Now, wisdom can only be gained at different levels if we have meekness in our personality because we cannot understand the things of God because the things of God are not just conceptual knowledge, but they're linked to his nature. And so as we make progress into his nature, 
he will reveal things to us. We'll see things, understand things, know things that we've never had a way to know before. Now, this, this is why part of the pathway, as I was talking about before, I had no idea where learning to walk in the love of the Father was leading us. We, we saw to start with, walking in the love of the Father teaches you how to walk as a son. That's fairly logical. It's fairly obvious. And now for me, it's fairly basic. As we walk in the love of the Father, we, are, we begin to walk as sons to the Father. There's, there's, we, we stop being just servants anymore because now we know his fathering love for us. We begin to see that it's about love, not about so much obedience. Although love will always be obedient because it wants to please the one it loves, but it's not like a military command that you have to be obedient no matter what you think. Love automatically wants to serve. Love wants to follow in the footsteps of the master, if you like. And so as we learn to walk in the love of the Father, we, we, firstly we start to walk as sons. But then as we walk as sons, we begin to see that there is an oldest son, the one who's walked with the Father eternity past. And so we see that this is the son who gives us the model of how we are to walk our life. And so we begin to embrace not just obedience to the Lord, but we begin to embrace becoming like him in our personality. And so as we begin to become like him in our, in our personality, we begin to let go of things that would be alien to his personality. For example, greed would be very alien to the personality of Jesus. And so we begin to embrace that. Generosity is very real in the mindset, the heart or the nature of Jesus. He gave his life. And so we begin to see that we want to become like him, not just to be generous in one way or another, but to be generous hearted, whatever that would be. There's all this stuff with racism at the moment. You know, Jesus is non-racist. Absolutely. He created every, every race of people, every color, every mindset, every way of thinking, every philosophy. He, he knows everything. He loves us regardless of all the funny things we might be, no matter what color, where we come from, what our ethnic background is, where our history is. And see, as we begin to, be walk, to walk as sons of the Father, we begin to embrace his nature, which naturally loves everybody the same. And there's no such thing as racism from it. it. It alarms me that there's Christians saying that they struggle with some of these things, you know, because really this is just what sonship is. It's becoming like Jesus in our nature. And so as we become like Jesus in our nature, and we begin to walk in kindness, we begin to walk in gentleness and goodness and we begin to walk in peace. We begin to walk in love for everybody. As we walk in those sort of things, you know, my iPad is doing a dumb thing. As we walk in, in, in deeper and deeper into those nature traits of God and they become imparted to us, an amazing thing seems to begin to happen is that he opens his understanding to us. He begins to show us things about us and himself the world, the universe, he begins to let us in on his secrets, if you like. They're only secrets when you don't know them. That's a funny thing. When, once he shows you something, it's, it's obvious. That's one of the amazing things about um, Revelation. And so what's been happening to, I know, to me in this last little while, and, and I'm absolutely surprised by it. I'm, I'm, in some ways, I'm, I'm scared of it. Uh, I'm, I'm partly terrified of it, but I'm beginning to see things that I don't know anyone else who's seen them. I mean, there has to be. There's, I sometimes wonder, am I getting some kind of, you know, well, you judge. So the meekness of wisdom, it talks about there, but then there's another verse further down, or a couple of verses, and um, verse 14, he says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, 
Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So it's talking about a wisdom that does not come from above. It is not a wisdom of God. And it shows that it produces these character traits. For example, like boasting, lying against the truth, um, envy, self-seeking, confusion, etc. The wisdom that comes from this world system that comes from the enemy to us has those character traits. Now, we look at the world today. Um, I put a little blog on my thing the other day. Um, and it simply said, um, the world is shaken at the moment because it's shakable. Um, and it's showing up the hearts of a lot of people. It's showing up the systems of some nations and the attitudes of some nations are being clearly exposed as being well away from God's heart towards the human race because the nations are being shaken. People in the nations are shaken. The, the governments are shaken. The people are against the government, etc. All kinds of things are happening. Criticisms back and forth. Um, all kinds of things are happening in the, in the nations because of the confusion that's here at the moment and all of the mess that's there. You see, the wisdom that's established us, if we are shakable, it's just exposing the confusion and the things that are there. However, it goes on to say here, and I'm not going to talk really a lot about the social situation or the virus or, you know, the racism things. That's not really the point. But in verse 17, it says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. In other words, it's not militant, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So you see, there's a wisdom that comes from above, but the wis that's the wisdom that comes from God. But when this wisdom comes to us, it always comes in peace and produces peace. Any kind of thing that's said to be wise or said to be knowledgeable or said to be right, if it comes in a militant spirit, and is not, as it says here, willing to yield. In other words, willing to be able to discuss, say, okay, I'm listening to what you're saying because I'm not sure that my what I'm seeing is 100% correct. I'm, I want to discuss this in an easy, peaceful, gentle, and kind and good way. That shows that the wisdom that comes, that the wisdom there could well have the source, the source in God. Often when I've seen conflict in people, in situations, and uh, particularly in church divisions or, or problems, you can often see that some people are so strongly sure they're right, they're not yielding on anything, and they're just being strong, overbearing, um, this is right, I'm right, that person's wrong, that's the end of it, I'm not listening to any argument, this is how I see it, this is how it is, this is what God thinks about it, this is it. Now I know when I listen to that, that is not the wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom that comes from above will always come with gentleness, with kindness, with goodness, with an open mind, willing to yield, willing to listen, willing to discuss. You see, what the point I'm making in this is that wisdom and God's personality come as a package. You cannot come into a greater knowledge of the wisdom of God unless you are coming into the knowledge of his as I said, the, the wisdom of God always comes with the nature of God. And for us to go deeper into wisdom is to go deeper into the nature of God, which is to go deeper into Christ-likeness inside of us. So, so that's kind of just disrupted my thinking a little bit. Um, so, that's just kind of an introduction to what I want to say. <laughs> so we've got about 20 minutes or so left for me to, to say what I'm wanting to say here. Um, a question that's come to me um, you know, we often as Christians think of our, ourselves 
in this world, in this universe, and God is somewhere out there, heaven is somewhere out there, whatever that is, and God is out there, but he is able to come into my life and bring my life into his presence or into his awareness or walk that I can walk with him in my life here. And hmm, I haven't talked about these things much, so I don't really know how to, how to attack this. There's about three sides that I can attack it from, and I'm not sure which is the most effective. So I'm just going to have to kind of jump in. I want to read a couple of verses to you. One's from John chapter 1, and it's verse 3. It says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that is made. There's also another verse in Colossians chapter 1, and I just want to read this to you because it's, it's going along the same kind of line. It says, it's Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, principalities and powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in, in him all things consist. This is talking about Jesus Christ. We know he is called the Word. These concepts are spiritual. They can be hard for us to really grasp. And so they're mentioned many different ways. But when it says, the very, the very verse 16, it says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and earth. The NIV, if some of you got an NIV, you'll read that and it says, For in him all things were created in heaven and in earth. And everything that has been made, it says, was made by him or through him and for him. So these terms, for him, through him, by him, and in him, all things were created. It talks something more about where God, who God is and where we are. Let me read another verse to you. This is a verse that we have uh, used quite a lot in Father Heart Ministries because it's in Acts chapter 17, because we want to, in those when talking about in other times, we want to focus that we all are God's children. And by creation, we all are. That doesn't become real now until we come into redemption. And then sonship becomes a real active reality for us. But even before we are born again, by creation, we have been created by a Father who loves us, and our being comes from Him, Christian or non-Christian. Because Paul says to the Greeks, as he's preaching in Acts chapter 17, it says from, um, where's the verse that says this? Yeah, verse 29 says, Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, or it says in verse 18, uh, 28, we are also his offspring. And Paul's talking to a bunch of Greek philosophers and city leaders. They're not Christians, but he says to them, we are God's offspring. But just going back a little bit further, in verse 28, um, is that the best place to read? The last line of verse 27, he says, He is not far from each, of, each one of us. This is again Paul preaching to this Greek group. He says, He is not far from each one of us, for, and now he's speaking to non-Christian Greeks, remember, for in him we live and move and have our being. He's saying this to non-Christians. In him we live and move and have our being. So his evangelistic message to these Greeks to draw them to Christ is telling them that even as non-Christians, they are living in Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. Now, there's some misinterpretation of the meaning of this in some places in the body of Christ. One is that people, in reading these ver this verse in particular, they say, 
because we are all in Christ, these Greeks that are not Christians, we're all in Christ, therefore everybody is saved. Let me just say, that's not the right interpretation of what it's saying here. It's saying there, there are two ways that the words in Christ are expressed in the New Testament. This is one of them where it says we are all in Christ. You see, if, if everything has been created that has been created has been created in Christ, then everything is physically in him. But then there is a spiritual connection that comes to us when we are born again that is a different level of being in Christ. So I just want to, to um, say that and then come to this. Here's a question. When God created everything through Christ, what did he create it out of? When he created everything, like the universe, the stars, the planets, when he created everything, what did he make it out of? Because before there was anything created, there was nothing. Like everything, the verse we read before, everything that has been made was made by Christ. Everything that has been created, everything that has been made, has been made by him. There is nothing in the universe that has not been made by him. So he didn't make it out of something other than himself, outside of himself. He didn't make the universe separate from himself. There wasn't any separate. So where did he create the universe? There's only one answer. He created it within himself. God is spirit. We need to understand that. And we also now are coming more and more to understand that matter, like physical being, glasses, physical being is actually energy. God's created the whole universe inside himself. We, 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 we tend to think that God is in the universe. A lot of atheists say, well, we've examined the universe, we've examined the physical world, the natural state of things, we, we, we understand these things, and we can't see God in it. Of course you can't. He's not in it. It's in him. And that's when Paul is saying to these Greeks, we, in him we live and move and have our being. Our whole life is actually in the being of God himself. That's why the trees and the plants and all of these things reveal something of the wonder of who God is because they are in essence connected to him, his personality, his nature. That's why things can be beautiful. There is nothing that is beautiful outside of Christ. There is nothing that is created outside of Christ. There's nothing exists outside of Christ. However, there are two different terms. I just want to look at these for a moment. See, what this has done for me in seeing some of these things, other than blowing my mind, it's, it has explained a lot of other things. Like one of the things it explains is when I lay hands on somebody and some spiritual virtue is imparted to that person, whether it be a deliverance or a, um, a healing or whether it be an anointing on something, whatever it be, when I lay my hands on somebody and part something, or anybody does as a Christian, it's because God dwells in my hand and he dwells in the person, but the person I'm praying for maybe has some um, disruption caused by the enemy in their life. But when I lay my hands on them, the, the the symmetry, the, the, the union, the, the beauty, the wonder, the goodness of God can be imparted into their bodies to align their body, their mind, their heart, their soul, align it to who God is. And so, of course, the laying on of hands can impart something because my hands are in Christ. My whole being, their body is in Christ, but somehow maybe the liar has come along and deceived them and been able to bring something into their life that has disrupted their the blessing that should be there. 
And so understanding has changed so many things for me. But let me just go back to this in Christ thing. In Acts chapter 17, in that verse we just read, it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. And Paul is speaking to non-Christians. And so therefore we see that he's talking about the physical reality of matter has all been created in God. But there's another verse I just want to look to. There's actually many of these throughout the New Testament where it talks about a different level of being in Christ. In Romans 8, verse 1, it says here, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So now it's talking about two different kinds of people, and one of them is in Christ. In the first way, we are all in Christ. Everything is, even the pillow that's behind my back is in Christ. But when we're looking at this one, this meaning of it, it's talking about redemption. Once I'm not walking according to the flesh, I've been redeemed, my spirit has been made alive, and now I'm walking according to the spirit, it says that I'm now walking in Christ, and this is a greater level of spiritual living. Do you understand? I don't know if, you, if anyone wants to wave at me that I'm making sense. But that's what we normally think of as in Christ. When you are in Christ, you are born again, you are a Christian, you are walking with God, you are saved, your eternity with God is sealed, you're going to walk with him forever, you're going to heaven, you've got fellowship with other saints, the, the, the Bible comes alive to you because spiritually your spirits come alive and awake, and so now you're walking with God whom you have contact with. And so now we know we are in Christ. But the other term that talks about Paul to the Greeks, he's saying the whole universe has been created in Christ. That's what that, um, those verses say in Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 16. It says, for in him all things are created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. We, we are much more connected to God than we think. And another, another thing that this has just impressed me with has been um, we often say to people, and, it's, and we say it to ourselves, we, we remind ourselves, but we often say it to people who are going through struggles, we're saying, you know, for every tear that you might be weeping in this problem you have, God has wept one as well. He feels the feelings of your your sufferings. He he empathizes. He knows what it's like for you to be going through this. And you see, of course that's true when we consider that he is in everything. Everything is in him. Like my body is in Christ. My arms are in Christ. If my arm is hurting, he can feel it. If my heart is breaking, he feels it because it's in his heart as well. Because my heart is in him. We are all in him. And so he knows what it's like for every one of us to be going through the things that we're going through. We are so in God. The whole universe is. Now, let me just jump and put these two things together. All of the knowledge that God has, all of his understanding of how everything works, how everything is, he is wanting to reveal that to us. He can only reveal some of those things to us as we make ground, at least in embracing the values of his heart. For example, you're not going to learn about generosity if greed rules your heart. You understand? We, you cannot get any wisdom into generosity if your heart is filled with self-centered focus. But as we relinquish those things in us and we embrace the attitudes, the heart, the values that God has, then he can reveal a wisdom to us that understands things at a deeper level than the human race 
has ever come into. The destiny of the church is not that we just convert the world, but that we be totally converted to the way that Jesus is in his basic foundational attitudes towards everything. Because in the final end, the answer to this world's problems is not trying to organize politically or militarily or any other way any kind of peace. It's never, ever going to work. The only way that we can come into peace in this world is when we, as a human race, embrace the values in the heart, in the heart of God. So, and he wants to reveal those things to us. As we embrace those things, he's going to not only reveal the makings and the workings of a human, he's going to continue to reveal and open up to us things of science, things of physics, things of um, well, everything that there is, every field of knowledge there possibly is, every craft, every, every um, interest that humans can make, he's going to impart a greater and greater, not only knowledge, but understanding of how all of these things work. And, and I can see now what the kingdom of God is. I mean, I, I, I've often, people often talk about the kingdom of God, and, and it's very, very sketchy what they're actually talking about. But what the kingdom of God is, is when the attitudes and the ways and the heart and the knowledge of God gets imparted into us as human beings, and we begin to make progress into a world that is increasingly embracing what God is like and letting that become what we are like. I, I, I don't know. I've never read anything like this from it. I've never heard anybody say anything like this. I, I've never heard anybody talk of these kind of things. But it seems blatantly clear to me now that what the Bible is, the whole focus of the Bible, the whole focus of the human race, the focus of God's purpose for us is to continuously embrace the heart and the attitudes and the ways of Jesus so that those things become who we are. And as that comes, we will come into the mind of Christ. We'll come to know the mind of Christ, not just know scriptures about what Jesus said on one day, but we'll understand why he said those things. We'll understand why he stands where he stands, why he thinks as he thinks, why he says what he says, why he does what he does. We will understand it, that we will do exactly what he would do in any given situation because we understand what he's actually like. And becoming, we become like him ourselves. I, I can see now why... Christianity is what it is. I can see where it's going. I can see the purpose of it. We need to bring as many people to Christ as we can. But the greatest work that you can do is to become like Christ yourself. There is no greater thing. Because once you start to do that, God will begin to have a doorway to bring his wisdom into this world. Let me just finish by saying a couple of things. There's three words. There's knowledge. Wisdom and understanding. Three words. I've, I've read those over and over throughout the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and my Bible readings over the years. And I've never really understood them. Now I know what they're talking about. Knowledge is information. And God has all of the information about everything. He's the only one who really knows everything. But with the knowledge, he also has understanding. You, you can know something, but don't understand why it works. I know how to drive a car. I don't understand why it goes down the road. I know it's something to do with petrol exploding inside and causing pressure in a piston. But all of the systems of a motor, somehow, I, I mean, I don't understand, but I know how to drive it. Understand, God has not only knowledge, he understands the workings of everything in relation to everything else. Wisdom is not actually a static thing. Wisdom is the doorway from one level of understanding into another. You will have a level of knowledge of something, 
and somebody will come along and they'll speak a word to you or speak about it and suddenly the lights go on and you understand at a deeper level the interesting thing as you go to the deeper level and begin to live there someone who's at a deeper level will have another word of wisdom and take you deeper wisdom is always relative to the level of knowledge you already have the level of understanding you already have and so that's why why um um solomon says to his son seek wisdom look for wisdom what it means is look for that revelation that takes you to a greater devil greater level of understanding always hunger for that which will take you deeper and as you hunger for that you'll go deeper to a deeper level of understanding the wisdom itself is relative to how deep you are what might be obvious to you is wisdom to someone who doesn't understand as much as you understand when we finally get wisdom as the pathway towards the understanding of how god thinks and we are slowly going deeper and deeper and deeper we need supernatural revelation words of knowledge words of wisdom prophecy those things which truly expose the way god thinks we need those ones insights good ideas they're always useful but revelation takes us deeper always into the presence and the way god thinks and so his purpose is as we say the whole earth will be filled with the glory of god firstly your heart will be a revelation of the personality of god and then the earth will be filled with the revelation of the knowledge of who god is and then finally the whole of the universe will be a revelation of who God is. This is incredibly big. I mean, the, one of the things I think about is if, if I could see, I can believe for the world to grasp the wisdom one day, to get on the path of the wisdom, because everybody wants to know everything, and God's the only one who does. We want to know how to make it work. We want to know how it works. And so as we're going deeper and deeper, into wisdom it takes us into the knowledge of god not knowing him in relationship but knowing what he knows it's open to us it's going to happen i don't know about you but that's quite exciting to me maybe some of you might have might this might be right over your head that's okay let me tell you it's endless we are going to know finally in the end we're going to know what God knows and be like God in our, in our understanding. And then we'll find he goes even deeper. So bless you all. I trust that the Lord will uh, somehow, for some of you at least, um, saw Glenn, your photo there before. Um, I think there's a pathway somehow for you here. Um, I'm just trying to think, Jesse Tong, I saw your photo, picture there on the thing before, I haven't seen you for a long time. It's good to see you. Um, a number of your faces I saw showing up. It's just great to know that you've come to join us today. I haven't seen your face for a long time, Les. Bless you sitting there in the background. And um, I just hand it back to you now, you guys. Bless you. And thank you for having me. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you very much, James. Thank you very much. I mean, this is, this is huge. It's, it's almost like, I feel like Father is inviting us to embrace a Christianity we've never seen it before. You know, we have no salvation, yeah. we have experience, you know, the gift of the Spirit and we want to do, but he's inviting us to yeah. live his life the way he lives his life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's what Christianity is, and we just thought it was um, going to church on Sundays or something. Yeah. Wow. That is wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. Really appreciate that, your time. Be with us. You're welcome. Wow. <laughs> you know, for some of you, maybe a um, lot, and you want to listen to this again, and we will make this available for you. You can download and listen again and again. There is more, there is more. We just kind of, James have opened a little bit, you know, and, and for, for some of you, just a little hole, but see through that. 
see through that and you're going to see things and he's he going to reveal to you that is so relevant for your walk with him and your expression of him uh, you know uh, amazing uh, in every areas you know <laughs> not just church life business in every areas he's going to give us wisdom and understanding that's uh, wonderful wonderful invitation <laughs> so embrace this um great you know before we are uh, broken break into our uh, breakup groups and if you want to do uh, stay in it you can join and you can share with one another what father have triggered in your heart that something really touched you today we can share with one another and you know four people sharing we edify encourage and we'll you know, have some time to pray uh, and it's only 15 minutes within that we'll do that um, if some of you just join i wanted to remind you again um, this month 27th of june james and uh, denise and mark they're going to do a, a conference from taupo and it's going to be live stream and if you want to be part of that you can register through father heart uh, website and you're able to hear more of uh, truth and revelation and they're going to be part of it. i'm looking forward for that so you're welcome to join on that too um and then next month uh, july from 5th to the 11th we're going to have a school in taupo and is you know people going to come together mainly Uh, people from new zealand to come for the school but if you want to be part of the school through live stream and we have made that available for you so you can register and be part of the school too so you can check the information on uh, on our website